In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Rigify to create an animation rig for a character model that you have extracted from a game without any weight painting involved. This tutorial assumes you already have some basic understanding of what a rig is and how it controls an object in Blender. Use the section chapters below to help navigate as necessary. Understanding the premise of this also requires understanding what Rigify is and how it works, so let me start from the beginning. Let's say you extract a character model from a game and want to use it for artwork in Blender. Often, the model will come with an armature that can be used to pose the model. However, it's just a basic forward kinematic deformation rig, with no mechanisms for things like inverse kinematics, foot roll, switches, targets, anything like that. We can build these mechanisms ourselves if we want to, however, this requires a lot of knowledge of rigging mechanisms as well as time to build and troubleshoot the rig, and even some programming knowledge if you want to build a rig user interface to help control it in a reasonable manner. Where Rigify comes in is in automating the construction of these rig mechanisms. Let's say you want to make an arm that uses inverse kinematics. It's almost always going to involve three bones, one of which has an inverse kinematics bone constraint on it. If you want to expand the functionality to add a switch between inverse and forward kinematics, you have to build the IK mechanism and the FK mechanism separately and have the deformation bones set up to follow these mechanisms using a switch. This, again, is almost always performed in the exact same manner. The only thing that will differ between different models is the location of the deformation bones. So since the mechanisms are almost always the same, it follows that we should be able to automate their construction. This is what Rigify does. It automates the construction of rig mechanisms in order to create a complex and useful animation rig. Rigify is a default Blender add-on. Go to Preferences, Add-ons, search for Rigify, and enable it if you haven't already. What this allows you to do is, in the Add menu, under Armature, add pre-created meta-rig templates for humans and certain animals. A meta-rig, by the way, is just a guide for the final generated rig that Rigify will create. The intended use is that you would reposition the bones of the meta-rig to match your model, generate the rig, and then, crucially, parent the mesh to the generated rig using automatic weights and manually refine the weight painting from there. If you've ever worked with weight painting, you know that this is a painful process best avoided if possible. In essence, the standard process for using Rigify assumes your mesh doesn't have a deformation armature yet, hence why you have to do the parenting with automatic weights and the manual refining of the weight painting. However, in our case, our exported mesh already has a deformation rig and is already professionally weight painted by the developers who made the model in the first place. So the question is, how can we use Rigify to build a rig without needing to reweight the model? Let's take one of these human meta rigs as an example. All this meta rig is, is a collection of individual limbs that are tagged with certain rig types, so that when the final rig is generated, the correct mechanisms are built in the right places and are controlling the right bones. In fact, you can manually spawn in individual rig components like arms, spines, hands, and legs by going to the Armature Properties tab in Edit Mode and adding a sample from the menu here. If you were to generate the rig at this point, this new limb would be included in the final rig. Side note, notice how when we generate the rig, the meta rig we generated it from is still present. We can go back and make edits at any time, and then regenerating the rig will simply update the existing rig that we created. Anyway, let's back out of this back to the meta rig. You can see the assigned rig type for a specific limb by selecting a bone in pose mode and going to the bone properties tab. Here we can see it's a limbs.arm rig. As long as the prerequisites for this limbs.arm rig type is met, this limb will always generate properly. For example, the limbs.arm rig type requires three bones in a connected chain with the rig type assigned to the first bone in the chain. So as an example, let me create one from scratch. I'll create a new bone, extrude one, and extrude another. In pose mode, we select the first bone and under rig type, add limbs.arm. Now if we go to the Armature Properties tab and generate our rig, you can see that we have something beginning to look like what we want. It's very rough and would need some refining, but the basics are all here. This is how we will be creating the rig for our model, by going through and setting up the proper rig type tags on the bones in the armature that came with the model we ripped from the game. No Rigify templates, no re-weight painting the model, just some easy fixes to the armature to make sure it meets the requirements for each rig type. In order to do that, we need to understand how each of the rig types work and what the options for each rig type are doing. There is great documentation online, which I will link below, that gives an overview of what the prerequisites and options are for each rig type. The best way to learn these rig types, in my opinion, is to have the documentation open and then experiment with both the pre-created human meta rigs as well as the rig samples and try to recreate those as best as possible on the exported model that you want rigged. So let's do just that. Let's import our dummy model that I'll be using as an example. 
This is the Geth Trooper model from Mass Effect 3. I've already set up the materials so things look a little prettier. First up, we want the model to face along the global y-axis just like the human meta rig. I'm not sure this is necessary, but I want it to face the same direction as the sample meta rigs for consistency's sake and to minimize the differences between them. Remember, if you do rotate the imported model, make sure to apply rotation first on the armature and then on the mesh object. As you can see, our boy comes with a strange looking armature. First, let's change the bone visualization from stick to octahedral. If we now spawn a human meta rig next to him, we see the differences between them. The main differences are as follows. 1. The imported rig has several bones that aren't used to deform the mesh, things like IK helpers, camera and prop bones, root and god bones. 2. The rigify rig has bones that the imported rig doesn't have. 3. The imported rig has these twist bones that don't correspond to anything on the rigify rig. And 4. Although the bones are set up with reasonable parent-child relationships, none of the bones are connected and they don't stretch to the next bone in their respective chains. So now let's go through and see how we can address these. First, the unused bones. Rigify will automatically create root bones and IK helpers, so we can delete all of these. Blender here has helpfully colored them brown in pose mode by having them all added to a bone group. Let's use the bone groups to select all unused bones, switch to edit mode and delete them. Side note, we also want to delete all bone groups here because otherwise they will interfere with things later on. For the bones that Rigify has that we don't have on our model, we can ignore them. These are some fairly basic humanoid bones but aren't needed in order to create our rig. Remember, all this meta rig is is a collection of rig mechanisms. If we remove one rig mechanism, it still works, it just doesn't include that particular mechanism in the final generated rig. So these boots, so these pelvis bones don't need to exist. We can still make the whole spine, hip, and leg rig without them. For the twist bones on our imported model that don't correspond to bones on our Rigify model, let's hide these bones for the time being and come back to them later. We will want them hidden in both edit and pose mode. Your model may or may not have these, but essentially what I'm doing is hiding, for now, any bones outside of the main components for the arms, legs, spine, neck, fingers, and collar. As for the bones not being connected and not stretching to the next bone in their respective chains, this will be the main thing we need to fix in our model for nearly all of the bones. Let's start with the arm rig. Let's try adding a rig to the left arm. In pose mode, I'll go to the bone properties and add the limbs.arm rig type, and then I'll hit generate rig on the armature properties tab. You'll see we get a rigify error saying that the input to the rig type must be a chain of at least three bones. Using the documentation, we can see that the prerequisites for the limbs.arm rig type are three connected bones, one for the shoulder, one for the elbow, and one for the wrist. We have these bones, but they're not connected. The first bone in this chain doesn't need to have the connected tag enabled, but what happens if we try to enable the connected tag on the elbow bone? I'll go to edit mode and enable it. You can see the head of the bone jumped to the tail of the parent bone. We don't want this. We want to avoid moving the head of these bones if possible, so instead we need to manually lengthen these bones so that when we enable the connected option, the bone heads don't move. We do this by setting the 3D cursor to the location of the head of the elbow bone and then setting the location of the tail of the shoulder bone to the location of the 3D cursor. We then repeat this for the wrist. Now we can enable the connected option on the wrist and the elbow without any bones jumping around. Now when we generate a rig, there's no errors and we have the basic rig set up. So we've fixed the main issues we've identified. Let's continue tweaking this arm and going through the options we have available to us. The next important concept to understand when working with a limb rig is the joint axis lock, and to help explain this, we will enable the axis visibility here in the armature properties. This shows the local axis orientation for each bone. Now, let's consider the elbow and the mesh for a moment. An elbow joint only ever rotates on one axis. For example, on this model, it rotates around the z-axis like this. The elbow axis does not twist along the y-axis, that happens along the shoulder and wrist. It also doesn't rotate along the x-axis, that would mean something painful is broken. Rigify understands this, and when the rig is generated, it will automatically lock the elbow rotation so that rotation only happens along one axis. But it does not always get the axis correct. In order to make sure Rigify gets it correct, we need to use the rotation axis setting and bone roll. Let's go through the troubleshooting steps here first with the rotation axis setting. It's set to automatic by default. I've never encountered a situation where automatic works for arms, so we want to change this, and we want to change it to the axis that the elbow rotates around. As I stated earlier, the elbow in this model rotates around the z-axis, so that is the axis we want to select here. But, for demonstration purposes, I want to show you what happens when each option is selected. Your model is likely different than mine, 
so your setup may differ slightly and you may need to be able to test, identify problems with, and troubleshoot the rig as you go along. So let's generate our rig so that we can test it. When Rigify builds its rig, the only bones it presents to you are the bones intended to be controlled by the artist. 99% of the time, as long as the rig is built properly, those are the only bones that the artist will need to interact with. These control bones, however, are only surface level. They control many mechanism bones, and those mechanism bones control the deformation bones which deform the mesh. These are hidden by default when the rig is generated or regenerated. Because those deformation bones are the ones actually controlling our mesh, if we can see that they are moving properly when we move our rig, then our mesh will move properly when we finally attach the two at the end. These bones are hidden in the last three bone layers, so if we enable the visibility on this bone layer here by shift clicking it, we can now see our deformation bones. Let's enter pose mode, select the hand, that's this paddle looking bone here, and move it around. Looking at the arm and the elbow joint, we can see that the deformation bones appear to be moving in ways that we would expect to see. If we check the IK poles by selecting this UI button here, we can see that the pole is facing backwards and down, exactly the way we want it. We want the IK poles positioned so that if you bend the joint of the limb, the joint is bending towards the IK pole. But our hand control bone here is twisted. It should be flat with the palm of the hand. So let's back out to our meta rig and change the rotation axis setting to X manual. Remember, we already know that the Z-axis is the correct one. I'm just doing this to demonstrate what an incorrectly set up limb looks like. Regenerating the rig, we can see that the hand control bone is now aligned with the hand. However, if we move the arm, things seem different. The elbow is bending upwards in a way that doesn't match our mesh, and our IK pole is pointing forwards. We just told Rigify to use the X-axis as the rotation axis, which, as we identified earlier, is not the correct axis, so things are behaving in undesirable ways. So since we know that the z-axis is the one we want, if we go back and set the rotation axis to z-manual, it should work, right? Things look fine until we show the IK pole. It's in front of the model, and as I explained earlier, it should be behind the model so that the joint bends towards it. So what gives? Automatic has the hand control bone rotated, x-manual breaks the elbow joint, and z-manual has the IK pole in the wrong spot. Well, this is where the second of our two tools for the elbow comes in, bone roll. Adjusting bone roll changes the alignment of the axes, and thus, along with the rotation axis setting, changes how Rigify will set up the elbow joint. If we go back to our meta rig, we can see that the Z axis is pointing up and back slightly. I don't know if this is actually a hard requirement, but from my experience, Rigify wants the correct axis to be pointing somewhat forward. Z axis is the correct axis, and it's pointing backwards. We need to flip this so that the Z axis is still the axis of rotation for the elbow, but the Z axis is pointing slightly forwards. We can do this by inverting bone roll. Go to edit mode, select the bones in the arm, and press Ctrl R and then 180 to rotate all selected bones by 180 degrees. The orientation of all axes are retained, only now the axes are flipped. Positive becomes negative and negative becomes positive. Now when we generate our rig, we finally get what we want. The hand control bone is in the right orientation, the arm is moving and the elbow is bending how we expect it to, and the IK poles are in the correct places. Again, your model may have a slightly different solution. If, at the end of the day, no combination of bone roll or rotation axis setting gets everything correct for you, as long as you can get the elbow and IK poles close to correct, you can fix the hand control bones orientation later when we talk about bone widgets. Also, under the rotation axis, when you select an option that isn't automatic, there's an auto-align hand option that shows up. I have never had this option do anything meaningful for the rig, but it is another option to try if you are still struggling to get the rig set up properly. Anyway, now let's look at the other options available to us. IK Wrist Pivot and Custom IK Pivot are both functionality options. Enabling them adds additional functionality to the rig that an animator could use, but doing so adds visual clutter. The IK Wrist Pivot adds a pivot control that rotates the entire wrist around the center of the hand rather than the wrist joint, like twisting a doorknob compared to knocking your hand on the door. The custom IK Pivot bone is an empty bone that follows the hand's position. However, when rotated, the hand follows the rotation of this bone. You can enable or disable these options as you think is necessary. Limb segments is probably the most important option here for what we are trying to do. In order to give animators more control for tweaking their animation and doing special squash and stretch poses, what this does is split each main limb bone into the number of segments listed and adding tweak bones in between. 
Here is an example of how they may work on a rig. This example comes from a rigging course that I highly recommend and will talk about at the end of the video. Essentially, I am moving the arm and then these tweak bones can further manipulate each limb in between like so. However, this requires that these bones on the deformation rig be split up in the same way. The shoulder bone therefore becomes two bones rather than one, and same for the elbow bones. This would require us to do some weight painting on our exported game rig and we want to avoid this. So back in Rigify, we want to set the limb segments to one. This reduces some of the options available to animators to tweak the poses, but it's not the end of the world and it's worth it to avoid weight painting. The B-Bone Segments option controls the use of bendy bones in the arm. Rigify uses bendy bones and it lets you set the number of B-Bone Segments if you'd like. There really isn't a reason to change this and you don't need to know how bendy bones work to use Rigify. IK Local Location changes whether or not the coordinate channels for the control bones are aligned with the local control bones orientation or the world. There are certain cases where you might want one or the other, but in my experience, I like having the location channels aligned with the world so I always have this unchecked. The layer options are also really important, but it's best to work on all the bone layers at the same time, so let's ignore these for now. And that's it. We're basically done with the arm. All we need to do is repeat this process for the other side and the arms are complete. Side note, if you're following along, you may notice that the generated rig isn't moving the model at all. This is intended and we will address this as one of the last steps in our process here. Now for the collarbones, things are done a little differently. When we look at the rig types to add, we don't see one for the collar. Let's go to the Rigify meta rig and see how they do it. Notice that they use a basic super copy rig type. This rig type simply copies the bone. There's no complex mechanism here, it's just a bone. However, it has three of the four options checked. The control option tells Rigify if a controller bone needs to be created. If this is not enabled, a bone that the animator can use will not be created. The widget option tells Rigify if a widget will be used to define the shape of the bone. This is how we have these special shapes being used for the rig, by the way. These are all widgets, and Rigify generates them automatically inside a hidden collection and tells the control bones to use them as their visual shape in pose mode. The box next to this option lets you specify a specific widget. Here, it is set to shoulder which is wrong, it's a collar, not the shoulder. Don't argue with me, it's my video, that makes me right. Either way, Rigify has a widget for the collar that they call shoulder. Relink constraints is a bit complex and for the purposes of what we're after, we don't need to get into it. Basically what I'm saying here is that I have no clue what this does. Anyway, with that in mind, let's see how we want to have this set up on our model. First, in the prerequisites for this rig type, there are no requirements. You don't need to enable the connected option or anything on any bone. We can even see this on the Rigify meta rig as the collar bones are very clearly not connected to anything. However, the size of this bone will determine the size of the control bone, so I'm going to stretch our collar bones out so that the tail is where the head of the shoulder bones are, but I will still leave the connected option disabled for both collars. When that's done, let's set up the Rigify options. Set the rig type to basic super copy. The same three options are checked by default, and all we need to do is change the widget to the improperly named shoulder widget. Now when we generate the rig, we see that one bone is flipped upside down. Your model may not have this issue, but if it does, it is likely due to the ever pesky bone roll. To fix it, let's go into edit mode and manually add or subtract 180 degrees to the bone roll. Now when we regenerate the rig, the collars are fine. Now for the hand. The whole hand mechanism within Rigify is fairly complex because it involves two main rigs, the palm and the fingers. Take a look at your hand for a moment. Your flat palm actually consists of the first bone for each of your fingers, the metacarpal bones. The bones that you consider your fingers are the phalanges. See that high school biology class was useful after all. If we look at our human meta rig and look at the bones in the hand, we see this same setup. Four metacarpal bones, followed by three phalange bones for each finger. I'm going to ignore the thumb for now, pretend it doesn't exist. If we check what rig types are on each bone, we can see that the only bone that has the limbs super palm rig type is the metacarpal bone for the index finger. No other bones on the hand have this rig type. From the documentation, the requirements for the limbs super palm rig type are that there are at least two bones set to be the child of the same parent bone, and that the rig type be set on the innermost palm bone. Indeed, if we use the sample menu to spawn in a limbs super palm rig, we see exactly this. We get a hand bone and four metacarpal bones, with the first metacarpal bone having the limbs super palm rig. Essentially, if Rigify sees this tag on a bone, what it does is look for the bone's parent, that's this bone here, and then check for other child bones for inclusion in the mechanism. This mechanism, when generated, adds a control to the metacarpal for the last finger bone, say the, the pinky, which lets the animator do some easy curling for the palm. 
you use the primary rotation axis option to set the rotation axis for the palm bones. The both sides option adds the same control to the index finger so you can curl the palm from the other side. And the extra IK controls option creates forward kinematic controls for the palm so each metacarpal bone can be controlled individually rather than just with the easy curl controls. Importantly for us, our imported model does not have metacarpal bones. The era of games that this model came from did not use more than a single hand bone to control the palm, but your model might. If that's the case, add the limbs super palm rig to the first metacarpal bone in the palm and play with the rotation axis until things show up properly when you generate the rig. For me though, I will simply focus on the fingers. Back to the human meta rig, we see that the first phalange bone for each of the fingers all have the limbs super finger rig on them. The requirements for this rig type are that there is a chain of at least two connected bones, and we can see that this is present on the human meta rig. Crucially, the first phalange bone is not connected to the metacarpal bone that it is the child of. Also the thumb. The thumb bone is the child of the metacarpal bone for the index finger. That way it is treated as a finger bone and not part of the palm rig. Anyway, we know what we need, a chain of at least two bones that are connected. Back on our imported model, we can see that the bones are all way too long and are clearly not connected. This is just like the arm. We need to set the lengths of the bones so that the tail of one bone is at the head of its child bone, and then enable the connected option on that child bone. If your rig is symmetrical, you can enable the x-axis symmetry up here to have the adjustments made on the left hand mirrored and duplicated to the right hand. This does not mirror rig types or the connected option, so you will still need to fix those manually. Set the 3D cursor to the location of the head of one bone, select the tail of the previous bone, and then set the location of selected to the location of the 3D cursor. Repeat until all fingers are done, and then enable connected on the applicable bones. Now let's set the rigify tags and generate the rig to see what happens. We see that these paddle things have been created. These paddles control the whole finger, and by scaling them, you control the finger's curl. This is great for animators because it means with a single control, you can set the curl of the finger rather than having to go through each bone one by one to set the curl. On this model, everything seems to be working fine. Leaving the bone rotation axis to default has worked without issue. If your fingers aren't curling properly, change this setting, regenerate the rig, and see what happens, or try recalculating bone roll. Remember that the fingers want to curl around one axis, and Rigify may not be able to automatically determine what axis to use. There's only really one other option here for this rig type, IK control. By default, the fingers are all forward kinematic rigs, but there's use cases for controlling them using inverse kinematics. Enabling this option will create that mechanism and a switch for switching the finger between IK and FK. When enabled, the IK local location option pops up, and we will disable it for the same reasons we disabled it for the arms. There's also an extra IK layers option, which we will return to later when I talk about bone layers. If we regenerate our rig, we can see that some new IK controls are created. By default, the IK FK switch is set to use FK on the fingers, so we need to set the switch to IK by selecting it in pose mode and changing it in the item tab here. Now when we move this control, we can see we have IK set up for the fingers. However, things aren't quite right. First off, this IK control is rather large, and it's not in the right spot. This IK control is supposed to represent the tip of the finger, but it's nowhere near it. Same goes for the FK control for the tip of the finger. This is all because of the size of the last bone in each finger. Back to our meta rig. The last bones in our fingers are all way too large. The IK controls, as well as the FK control for the tip of the finger, generate at the tail of this last bone. So we need to rescale and reposition the tail of this bone so that it matches the tip of the finger for the mesh. We can start by scaling the bones down and by moving the tail until it seems just right, but however you do it, just make sure that the tail of the bone is generally near the tip of the finger. If you're going to scale them, remember to set the translation pivot point to individual origins so that the bone's head does not move. Now let's regenerate the rig. This is much better. The controls are where they ought to be and the size of the control bones is much better as well. We can call this done. Now it's just a matter of doing the same thing for the other hand. Now for the legs. For this rig type, I recommend checking the documentation first. The rig type is limbs.leg. Looking at the documentation, we see that the prerequisites for this rig are a chain of four connected bones. One for the thigh, one for the shin, then the foot, and then the toe. However, it also requires an unconnected bone as the child of the foot to act as the heel bone. This heel bone will be what Rigify creates the heel roll mechanism around, and if we generate the human meta rig, we can see what this mechanism is doing. 
Back on our imported model, like with the arms and the fingers, we need to fix the lanes of the bones and set the connected option, so let's do that quickly. I hid the twist bones and fixed the bone lengths and set connected on all bones except the first one. I also repositioned the tail of the toe bone. Bone size and orientation can have an impact on our final control bones and we want those to best represent the model. Now for the heel bone. We want to essentially copy what the meta rig has, a bone that is flat along the ground facing outwards from the inside of the body located around the heel of the model, and it has to be the child of the foot bone but not connected. I'm going to extrude one bone from the tail of the foot bone. My imported model calls this the ankle bone, the name doesn't matter. I'm going to disable the connected option for both the left and right bones. Now, we want this bone to be flat along the ground facing outwards, so I will manually set the Z coordinates for the bone's head and tail to zero, and then copy the Y coordinates from the head to the tail so that it only stretches along the X axis. Bone roll is important here, so I will clear the bone roll with Alt R. Then I will move the whole bone along the Y axis until it is around the heel of the model. Remember that wherever you set this bone is where the heel will roll around, so set it somewhere that makes sense for that purpose. I'm going to set mine just slightly inside of the heel. Now for size. The length of this bone should be the width of the foot. This is because the length of the bone determines where the Y axis roll mechanism will roll the foot. The bone's head will be where the foot rolls around when rolling the ankle inward, and the tail of the bone will be where the foot rolls around when rolling the ankle outward. Since our heel bone already has the correct Y axis location for the heel, we only need to set the X axis locations for the head and tail. Using the front perspective is really useful here. I'll select the head and move it along X until it is just about at the inside part of the foot and do the same for the bone's tail for the outside part of the foot. With that, the bone layout should be set up properly. We need to give our heel bones an appropriate name. I'll follow the naming convention on this imported model by calling them left heel and right heel. The name ultimately doesn't matter so long as it makes sense. Back in pose mode, let's set up the rigify options now. As mentioned before, the rig type is limbs.leg. There are a lot of options here, so let's go through what each one does. Foot pivot determines the kinds of pivot mechanisms that will be set up for the foot. Ankle and toe is the default and I recommend not changing it. Ankle roll rolls the foot around the heel of the foot and toe roll rolls the foot around the toe. This rigify option is basically just letting you decide what options the animator will have available to them, and I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't want to have both. The separate IK toe option is a bit weird. Without this option enabled, a single toe control bone will be created for controlling the toe in both IK and FK situations. The documentation says that if this separate IK toe option is enabled, it separates this function, and this is necessary for correct IK FK snapping in all all possible poses. I haven't encountered a situation where this has been necessary, but it doesn't hurt to enable it just in case. Rotation axis is just like the rotation axis option for the arm. It determines the axis that the IK chain bends along. Unlike the arm, Rigify is pretty good at getting this one correct if you just leave it to automatic. To tell if it gets it wrong, just like with the arms, you need to generate the rig, enable viewing the hidden deformation bones, and then move the foot controller up. I'll show you this on the human meta rig. I have one leg set to X manual and one set to Z manual, and then I'll regenerate the rig. If we move the foot we set to X manual up, everything seems fine, but if we do the same for the leg set to Z manual, everything breaks. If your rig behaves like this when you test it, try changing the rotation axis setting or recalculating bone roll like with what we did for the arm. The remaining options are identical to the options of the same name on the arms rig that we did earlier. Limb segments splits each main limb bone for adding additional tweak bones and we don't want that because it would require reweighting the model. Set it to 1. B bone segments controls the bendy bone segments, we can leave this alone. Custom IK pivot creates an empty pivot point that the foot control bone rotates around and which otherwise follows the location of the foot control bone. When enabled, it can have an unintended side effect of changing where the foot control bone generates. And then there's the IK local location, which we want disabled, just like with the arm. Now for the spine. The spine rig is interesting because there's two types, spines basic spine and spines super spine. The human meta rig uses the spine's basic spine rig for the spine, but there's no documentation on it. The only available documentation is for the super spine rig. This is a mistake in the documentation. If you try to apply the super spines rig, it gives you a warning that it is depreciated. Instead, we will be using the basic spines rig. The requirements for this rig type are a chain of at least three connected bones. Importantly, the bone for the start of the head needs to be disconnected. Essentially what Rigify is doing is taking the bone with the basic spine rig option and looking for a connected child bone. 
and then a connected child of that bone, and so on for however long the spine happens to be. So back to our model, what do we need to do? Well, we need to fix the bone length so that the tail of each bone is at the head of its child bone and set the connected option. Notice, however, in this case that the first bone, the pelvis bone, is strangely off-center. Additionally, the bone hierarchy is off. This pelvis bone is not the parent of the spine, it's the parent of the legs. The next bone, the lower back bone, is the parent of the spine. You may not need to do any fixes for your model, but regardless, the results should be the same. There should be a single chain of connected bones for the spine. I will manually adjust the bone hierarchy so that this pelvis bone is the parent of the lower back bone, and then fix the bone tail lengths and set the connected option. When you come to the base of the neck, stop. We will come back to this when we set up the head. Now let's set the rig type on the first bone in the spine and go through the options. The first option we are presented with is the pivot position option. When this rig is generated, it will create a hip rotation control bone for swinging the hips without moving the spine as a whole. This pivot position option sets where that rotation will be performed around. The number corresponds to the bone number in the spine. One means the first bone, two means the second bone, and so on. One is always the minimum, and the maximum is the total number of bones in the spine minus one. So if your spine has five bones in it, this option can be anywhere from one to four. Let's look at the human metarig for an example of how this works. Let's set it to one and generate the rig. Making the deformed bones visible, if we grab the hip controller and rotate it, we can see that the hips are moving around the tail of the first bone. If we set pivot position to 2 and then regenerate the rig, we see that now the hips are moving around the second bone in the spine. So when you're deciding what to put for this option, think about where the rotation would best take place. Keep in mind that the rotation occurs around the tail of the bone, so setting it to 3 will cause the rotation to occur around the tail of the third bone, which is also the head of the fourth bone. In my case, I will leave this setting at 2. The custom pivot control option is a lot like the custom IK pivot option for the legs and the arms. Enabling it creates an empty bone that follows the location of the hips, but when the bone is rotated, the hips will follow its rotation. The FK controls option is one you want to leave enabled. Essentially what the spine rig is doing is creating an easy and simplified way of controlling the spine for the model, but there are some cases where refining that pose using individual controls for each bone will be useful, and enabling this option is what ensures that these control bones are created. And that's it, now we just have the head to worry about. Rigify's head rig, called Spine's Superhead, is both the rig for the head and the neck, so head rig or neck rig can be used interchangeably to refer to this mechanism. There is no current official documentation for this head rig. However, the requirements are very similar to that of the spine. It requires three connected bones. We've done this before, so this seems like a quick and easy fix. Just go into edit mode and make sure the tail of each bone is at the head of its child bone and then enable connected. If we add the rig type now and try to generate the rig, things would work just fine. The rig will generate and you will be able to move without issue. However, this setup will not work with one of the rig options that is present in the head rig. Notice that the tail of the last bone in the spine and the head of the first bone in the neck are not connected. Rigify will create separate tweak bones at each of these locations. Now this is fine for the rig, it should work without issue. However, if you want these to be connected without separate tweak bones, we have to enable the connect chain option in the rig options. This option tells the rig to consider the spine and the head connected in one unbreaking chain. However, if we generate the rig now, we get the somewhat infamous bone position is disjoint error. This is because the spine and the neck are, as the error says, disjoint. The head of the first neck bone and the tail of the last spine bone are not in the same location. To fix this, we go back into edit mode and change the tail of the last bone in the spine to be at the location as the head of the first bone in the neck. Now when we go back and generate the rig, everything should be working. If you are still encountering an error, try enabling and then disabling the connected option on the first bone in the neck and try again. This might help force the spine, tail, and neck head locations to be the same. Now we have the most important parts of our rig set up and ready to go. But what about the more unique parts of the rig? Back at the start, we hit a bunch of twist bones to make building this rig easier. These bones are still bones that control the mesh, so we need to figure out how to set them up in a way that allows the animator to use them. Back when we set up the collarbones, I talked about the basic super copy rig type, a rig type that essentially just copies the bone over to the final rig and gives it a control bone. This is the rig type we want to use for these unique bones, so we can set this rig type on all of our other bones and twist bones and leave everything else be. Our options are already set up the way we want them. We want a control for them, we want a widget, we can leave the circle as the widget for now, and we want the bones to deform the mesh. 
What we've done here for these other bones is exactly what you would do for any custom bones you create. For example, let's say I wanted a bone to control the pauldrons here, or to control the head flaps on this machine. This would of course mean creating new bones in edit mode and doing some custom weight painting and assigning vertex groups and things like that. But if it is something you want to do, you would set them up in the same way you would set up one of these twist or other bones. Just give them a basic super copy rig type and then select a widget. Let's talk about the face for a moment. The face is incredibly complex. If you've spawned in the human meta rig or a sample of the face rig, you can see that there's dozens of bones here. This is an incredibly complex set of control mechanisms. We're talking about standard controls with several different layers of tweak controls for the entire face, from eyes to eyebrows, jaws, tweaks, and even ears. If you read the documentation on it, this is not something that is very customizable. It requires a centralized face bone, and then all of these other bones need to be present as well. If even one is missing, the rig will not generate. Now, this is slowly being updated. Development goals for the face rig are to break it apart into components rather than this big mess of a face. But at least for now, we're stuck with this. So what does this mean for you? Well, since the face rig requires that all of these bones be present, it is likely that your model does not have the corresponding bones for this rig. And as such, the only way to use Rigify for the face would be to perform the parenting with automatic weights and manual refining of the weight painting that we've been trying to avoid in the first place. I don't have a solution here. The face is the one area where this process breaks down, and your only option may be to bite the bullet and weight paint it. Basically what I'm saying here is that I'm not going to cover the face at all and just pretend it doesn't exist, sorry. Now that we have our rig types set for all our bones, this is a great point to pause for a moment. Up until this point, I have specifically avoided talking about bone layers and bone groups. Our final rig is going to have a ton of bones for artists to use. So many that it will be way too visually cluttering to always have all of these bones visible at the same time. Indeed, if we generate our rig now, our rig layers are empty aside from the root layer. We can't control what bones are visible, and all our bones share the same color. However, if we generate a rig off the default human meta rig, we can see that they have many bone layers, and the bones are all color coordinated. How this is handled in Rigify is through bone layers, which creates the user interface for hiding or unhiding bones, and bone groups, which gives the bones their colors. Let's take a quick look at the human meta rig for a moment. In the Armature Properties tab, under the Rigify options, we have options for bone groups and bone layers. This process starts with the bone layers. Each of the listed bone layers here corresponds to one of Blender's bone layers. Here, we give layers their names, build their user interface, and assign bone groups to them. The bone groups then determines their colors. Whichever name you give the layers here will be the name of the layers in the final rig user interface. If I rename one layer to test, for example, and then regenerate the rig, we will get a layer called test in our final rig. A bone layer will only show up in the final rig, however, if there is at least one bone assigned to it. You can give every layer a name, but if there are no bones in a layer, it will not show up in the final rig. I've deleted all the face bones from this human meta rig, so these first bone layers for the face will not show up in the final rig. The UI row determines where in the final UI the layer will be. Let's look at the final UI for a second. This first test layer is at the top, the first row of the user interface. Checking the meta rig, we see that the test layer is on UI row 3. The face layers on rows 1 and 2 are empty, so they are ignored by Rigify, leaving the test layer as the topmost bone layer. Back to the final rig, we can see some layers are sharing the same row. If you assign two bone layers to the same row in the setup here, they will show up side by side in the final rig. Up to four bone layers can be side by side on the same row. If we change torso tweak to row three and then regenerate the rig, both it and the test bone layers will show up on the same row. Finally, the bone group number corresponds to a bone group set above. All bones in the layer will be assigned to that bone group and will take on the bone group's color properties. But how does Rigify know what layer to put each bone in? The answer is that it doesn't, not really. When Rigify generates a rig for a rig component, say the leg rig, all of the default control bones for that rig will be placed in the same bone layer as the bones for the leg in the meta rig that they were generated from. If the thigh, shin, foot, toe, and heel bones are in one bone layer, when the rig generates, the IK control bones for that leg will be in the same bone layer in the final rig. If the rig type is one that generates secondary control mechanisms, like separate FK controls or tweak bones, the bone layers for those are set using the additional bone layer options in each rig. Let's take a look at the thigh bone on the human meta rig. The bone is in this layer, so when the rig generates, the IK controls, which are the default controls for the leg, will be in this layer. 
The option for assigning FK layers tells Rigify what layer to put the FK control bones in. In this case, it's the next layer after the IK controls. Then, the option for assigning tweak layers tells Rigify what layer to put the tweak bones in. So that's what we need to do with our imported model. We need to give names to the bone layers, assign all bones to their assigned bone layers, assign the secondary or tertiary control bone layers in each rig's options, and then set up the rig's UI layers. Now, Blender's UI for bone layers is miserable at best. Creator Finn has an amazing bone manager add-on that I will link below that can make this process much easier by giving you this bone layer management interface that can name, hide, and easily assign bones to different layers. The bone layer name assigned in this add-on does not correspond to the names set in Rigify, so keep in mind that it's only useful here as an organizational and layer assigning tool. However, I want to show how this process can be done without using any add-ons, so I won't use this add-on here. First, let's give names to our layers. You can follow the same layer names as used by the MetaRig if you would like, but keep in mind that depending on your model, you may not have bones for certain bone layers, or you may have bones for layers that the human MetaRig doesn't have. I'm going to use a very similar set to the one used by the human MetaRig. Layer 0 I will call Torso, Layer 1 I will call Torso Tweak, then Fingers FK, Fingers IK, and Fingers Tweak, Left Arm IK, Left Arm FK, Left Arm Tweak, Right Arm IK, and so on for the rest of the right arm, the left leg, and the right leg. Notice here that the last layers are locked off. These are the layers that Rigify will use for the deformation, mechanism, and original bones. None of these bones will be the ones we directly control, so they are hidden. Also, layer 28 here is the root layer and already set up to be the last layer in the rig UI. Now that we have our layers set up, let's go about assigning the bones to the correct layers. When doing this, we need to keep in mind how the bone layer numbering works out. The numbers here in Rigify correspond to each layer, starting at the top row and going across. This is bone layer 0, this is layer 1, this is 2, this is bone layer 7, this is bone layer 15, this is 16, this is layer 23, you get the picture. So for the torso bones, we need them all in bone layer 0. This is good news, all bones are in bone layer 0, so we don't need to edit these. Starting with the arms, the arms consist of three bones, and their default control mechanism is the IK controls. Our left arm IK layer is bone layer 5, so we need these three bones on layer 5. Select all three bones in pose or edit mode, press M, and then move them to layer 5. Notice how the bones immediately disappear. This is because bone layer 5 is currently hidden. We can enable visibility on this layer by selecting the render option next to it in the Rigify options. That's the basics for moving the bones. Keep moving the bones until they're in the right layer. For me, the right arm bones are being moved to bone layer 8, the left leg is moved to layer 11, the right leg is on layer 14, and the fingers are on bone layer 2. Note that for the fingers, FK is the default control mechanism, not IK, so the finger FK layer is the layer I will put these bones in. Also note the collar bones. The human meta rig has these bones put in the torso layer by default, but I want these bones to also be visible when the IK or FK arm layers are visible. If we assign a bone to multiple layers, Rigify will keep it that way. So if we have the left collarbone on bone layers 0, 5, and 6 for the torso, left arm IK, and left arm FK layers, it will also be on those layers in the finished rig. We can assign a bone to multiple layers by holding shift when assigning them. Now we have to go through our rig types that we set and set up the bone layers for the tweak or other control bones that Rigify will be creating. It might be helpful to take a screenshot of your Rigify bone layers here to help remember what layers are which. Starting with the left arm, we need to assign layers for the FK bones and the tweak bones. These are layers 6 and 7, so I will set the FK bones to layer 6 and the tweak bones to layer 7. Then, you just repeat this for all others. Right arm FK and tweak is on layers 9 and 10. For the fingers, we need to enable the extra IK layers if we haven't already, and the finger FK is layer 3, while the finger tweak is layer 4. Left leg FK and tweak are layers 12 and 13. Right leg FK and tweak are layers 15 and 16. The spine and neck have additional layer options for both the tweak and FK controls, and I personally think that both of them are well suited to be on the same torso tweak layer, which thankfully is already set up for me by default. Finally, our twist bones from earlier. These aren't bones we would often use, so I want these to be on our tweak layers for each limb. For me, the left arm tweak is layer 7, right arm tweak is layer 10, left leg tweak is layer 13, and right leg tweak is layer 16. 
If we were to generate our rig now, our user interface would have all our layers jumbled together. That's because all are currently assigned to UI row 1. We want to split these up so they are more reasonably organized. I'm going to put the torso, torso tweak, and the finger layers all on their own rows. However, I want the left and right arm IK layers on the same row, and same for the left and right arm FK layers, and the left and right arm tweak layers, and the same for the legs. I will give all layers that I want on the same row the same UI row number. Now when we generate the rig, the UI is set up properly and we can hide and unhide control bones as needed. Now for the colors. Bone groups are used to assign a color to a group of bones. We do this using the Bone Groups menu within the Rigify menu on the Armor to Properties tab. Importantly, these bone groups that you create here are not the same as the default bone groups within Blender up here. If you create bone groups in the Rigify menu, nothing happens with the default Blender bone groups. Create a bone group in the default Blender menu and nothing changes in the Rigify bone group menu. Only when the rig is generated do the bone groups in the Rigify menu become Blender bone groups. All you need to know is that when you are creating the bone groups for the bone colors, you need to work within the Rigify menu, not the default Blender menu for bone groups. Anyway, the easiest thing you can do is hit the Add Standard button, which adds the six standard bone groups used by Rigify. But if you're like me and want a bit more options, you can add new bone groups manually. Remember to rename them to something that makes sense. You can set the color by clicking the first of the color boxes. The other two color boxes are the colors for active or selected bones. By default, Rigify overrides these so that all bones, no matter the bone group, will have the same color when selected or when active. If you don't want this, click the Unified Select Slash Active Colors button to disable it and you will be able to manually select what the color will be for the selected or active bones. For me, I like having separate groups for each side of the body and for each limb, so I will create layers for root and torso as well as left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg, and the hands. I will give each one a color that I have pre-prepared. In order to tell Blender what bone layers to assign to each bone group, we will use the last column in the layer menu here. Set a bone layer to group 1, which in my case is the root bone group, and all the bones in that layer will be assigned to that bone group when the rig is generated. Helpfully, the name of the bone group we assign shows up when we add them, so now it's just a matter of assigning the right bone group to each of the layers. Now when we generate the rig and go into pose mode, our rig UI is set up and functioning properly, and all our bones have the right colors. What if we want a specific bone widget for some of our bones? Particularly, this might be useful for our non-standard bones, the twist bones. I have a widget that I like to use for these twist bones that looks like this. How do I go about having this be the widget for the twist bones? Well, one useful feature about Rigify is that if you have a custom bone widget assigned to a bone, that same widget will be used for that bone when the rig is generated, even if the rig type you've selected would normally assign its own widget. For example, the twist bones are all set with the basic super copy rig type and are set to use Rigify's default circle widget. If I manually assign my widget in the viewport display for this bone and then generate the rig, the bone widget I set will override any widgets from the rig type. So for your model, if you have any specific widgets that you want to use for your bones, assign them to the bone in question on the meta rig and they will carry over when we generate the rig. However, what doesn't copy over are any settings for the widget's location, like any of these scale, translation, and rotation settings. You will have to set those manually once the final rig is generated. What if you want your rig to have an options or properties bone? A bone that has a bunch of custom properties that are controlling aspects of the model through drivers, like controlling part of the material or hiding certain parts of the mesh. This bone would need to be present on the final rig, visible on all bone layers, with a custom widget, a child of the root bone, and have its position and scale locked. So how do we set this up? When Rigify generates a rig, it automatically creates a root bone, and automatically has all of the rig components assigned as the child of that bone. So if we create a new bone without a parent, Rigify will make it the child of the root automatically. As we mentioned earlier, we can assign it a custom widget here in the meta rig and it will stay around for the final rig. In order to make it copy over properly to the Rigify rig, we need to give it a rig type. It's not a deformation bone, so we can give it a simple basic raw copy rig type. You won't need to change any of the rig options, this rig type just copies over the bone. Rigify also copies over the bone's transform settings, so if you lock a location, rotation, or scale axis on the bone, the generated rig will also have these locked, so we can lock these here. For the bone layers, Rigify keeps the bone in the generated rig on the same layers it's assigned to in the meta rig. So to make sure this bone is on all bone layers, we just need to add it to all layers from 0 to 16, as well as layer 28, which is the root layer. With that, the properties bone is set up. When the rig is generated, it will be correctly set up on the final rig. 
Keep in mind that drivers don't carry over when you generate the rig, so creating custom properties and setting up drivers so that they control aspects of the model or materials should be done after the rig is generated. Now finally, we should be ready to generate our final rig. We've cleaned up the model, assigned rig types to each of the limbs, set up non-standard bones, set up bone layers and bone groups, set up custom bone widgets and the properties bone. To generate the rig, finally, we head to the Armature Properties tab and hit the Generate or Regenerate Rig button. And this is what our rig should be looking like. However, if we tried to use it now, the model wouldn't move. Even if we went to the mesh object and changed the armature modifier to target our new rig, it still wouldn't work. Why is that? It's because our vertex groups no longer match the generated rig. When Rigify generates the rig, the bones that are intended to control the mesh, the deformation bones, all have the same names as the bones on the meta rig, only with the DEF prefix attached to them. A bone by the name of left wrist will become DEF dash left wrist. We can even see this on the final rig if we unhide the deformation bone layer and check the bone names. Normally, if a mesh is the child of an armature and the mesh has an armature modifier targeting that armature, if you rename a bone associated with a vertex group, it will automatically change the name of that vertex group. But Rigify is generating a brand new rig, and our mesh is not the child of it, nor is its armature modifier targeting it, so none of the vertex groups got renamed. So our last major step here is to rename all our vertex groups so that they match the names of the deformation bones. This means adding the DEF prefix to all the vertex groups. There's two ways of doing this, one with an add-on and one using default blender. The first method is to use an add-on by Matthias Patschieder. I apologize if I'm saying the name wrong. I've linked the add-on in the description. This add-on gives you this menu which allows you to mass rename a ton of things, including bones. As long as our mesh object's armature modifier is targeting a rig, if we change the name of a bone, the name of any associated vertex group will also be changed. But right now, this armature is still our meta rig. If we change the names of the bones to add the DEF prefix to them, thus adding them to the vertex groups, we won't be able to go back and make adjustments to the rig and then regenerate our rig because in doing so, the updated rig will add a second DEF prefix to all our bone names. To avoid this, let's duplicate our armature and keep it as a backup in case we need to go back and edit our rig again. Now we can work on renaming the bones without destroying our ability to go back and make edits to the final rig. So in our renaming panel, I will change the target to bone and leave the only selected checkbox on so it only affects the bones we have selected. In edit mode, I will then select every bone except the properties bone, enter DEF dash into the prefix box, and hit add prefix. Now, all our vertex groups should be renamed and we can now use our generated rig to control the mesh. However, like I said before, I want to show you this process without using any add-ons. So how do we rename these vertex groups without an add-on? Manual. Sorry, no tips or tricks here. We have to go through each vertex group and manually add the DEF dash prefix to each name for such. It's not that hard as we can just copy the prefix and paste it in for each group, and there aren't too many vertex groups to worry about. Now we can hide our meta rig, set the mesh to be the child of the generated rig, and set the armature modifier to target the generated rig. Now when we move our rig in pose mode, the mesh follows as intended. We're just about done, we just need to do some brief cleaning up on the rig. If your model is like mine and your limbs have bones in them that are outside of the regular rig, like these twist bones, you will notice that when we stretch the arms and legs out, they get bigger in all directions rather than being stretched as intended. This is because of the parenting of our twist bones. When Rigify generates the rig, it creates these deformation bones intended to drive the mesh. However, it also has the original bones in the last bone layer, using the ORG prefix in the names. The deformation bones are the ones that have all the complex stretching and other mechanisms assigned to them, not the original bones, and the deformation bones are each parented to their original bone. Because of the way transforms from parenting and bone constraints work and override each other, and the way the mechanisms are set up by Rigify, what this means is that while the shoulder deformation bone is stretching properly, the twist bones are not. The fix is simple. In edit mode, select the deformation bone for each of the twist bones and change the bone's parent. The shoulder twist bone should have the shoulder deformation bone as the parent, the elbow twist bone should have the elbow deformation bone as the parent, and the thigh or hip twist bones should have the hip deformation bone as their parent. Your model may or may not have the exact same setup for your non-standard bones. The gist is that the deformation bones for any of your non-standard bones need to have the same hierarchy as they have on your meta rig. Rather than be parented to the original bone, they need to be parented to the deformation bone of the parent that they have on the meta rig. 
You will also want to do this with your control bones. For each non-standard bone that isn't a part of the regular arm, leg, or spine rigs, you want to set the control bone's parent to whatever the deformation bone is parented to. So if your left arm twist deformation bone is parented to the left shoulder deformation bone, then your left arm twist control bone should also be parented to the left shoulder deformation bone. However, once we do this, you'll notice that you are no longer able to control your non-standard bones. This is where we get into some complexities with how rigs are built, and hopefully your model has very few or none of these kinds of bones, so you don't have to encounter this issue. The deformation bones were each set up to be the child of the original bones, and it is those original bones that are set up to follow the movement of the control bones. In order to fix our stretching issue, we change the parenting so that our deformation bones are now parented to other deformation bones. This means that when we move a control bone from one of our non-standard bones, it moves the original bone. But since our deformation bone is no longer the child of that original bone, the deformation bone doesn't move, and therefore the model doesn't move either. To fix this, we're going to have to pop open the hood of how the rig works. If we look at one of the original bones for one of our non-standard bones, and go to the Bone Constraints tab, we see a Copy Transforms constraint that is targeting our control bone. We need to duplicate this exact constraint on our deformation bone. Select your control bone, then Shift Select your deformation bone, and press Control Shift C and select Copy Transforms. This will put a Copy Transforms constraint on your deformation bone which is targeting the control bone. Repeat this for all your non-standard bones, and now your control bones will work again. The other thing to clean up is the widgets. I mentioned earlier that although custom widgets do carry over between meta rig and final rig, the translation settings on them do not. Now that we have our final rig, we can go into the custom bone objects and adjust them to be better sized and positioned. I want my twist bones, for example, moved along the y-axis and some of them shrunk down. The hippie control bone is rotated. This is because the first bone in our spine rig, the pelvis bone, is tilted. We fix this by changing the rotation of the widget in the custom shape setting. The foot IK control bones are not on the ground. This is because the IK control bone is generated at the Z height of the tail of the foot bone. We can fix this by adjusting the bone widget position. Also, the heel roll control bone is too close to the model. Like with the foot control bone, we just adjust the control widget's position in order to fix. Lastly, if you have any custom properties and drivers that you want set up, now is the time to set those up on the properties bone. And with that, you're done. It sounds like a lot because there's a lot of specific things to know, but once you understand the process, it can be done fairly quickly. As an example, for the rest of the video, I'm going to show a time lapse of me setting up this custom rig on the Geth model. Now, if you would like to learn more about what is going on here, particularly how some of these rig mechanisms that Rigify are generating works, I highly recommend the Art of Effective Rigging course by P2Design. This course will take you through a step-by-step -step process for creating an effective and complex character rig from scratch, including setting up deformation bones, weight painting, and all the nice limb mechanisms. It covers around 90% of what Rigify does and teaches you how to do it by hand. This could be incredibly useful if you really want to understand what Rigify is doing. I've taken it myself and I highly recommend it. I've put a link in the description, check it out if you're interested. Anyway, that's the video. I'm tired, I'm gonna go lay down.